Welcome to episode five of On the Road with Signing Agents. I'm so excited about today's episode. I'm here with Amber from Colorado. Hi, Amber. How are you? Good. Good. So this interview was actually supposed to take place yesterday, but it didn't. Amber, can you tell everyone why it didn't happen yesterday? Well, I had six appointments yesterday, so my schedule was a little tight, but... And also my computer was kind of not working, so. signings in one day? Like, that's incredible. How many signings did you do last week in total? Mm, 17, I think I counted up. But I kind of took Wednesday off, so. That is, so you did 17 signings and taking Wednesday off. It's incredible. And then how many signings do you have lined up for Monday? Monday, I have seven so far. So. Insane. This is why I love On the Road with Signing Agents. We're literally talking to a successful signing agent in Colorado, she's gonna tell us how she became a signing agent. She can tell us her story. She's gonna give you some tips that help build her business. So I'm really, really excited. So Amber, uh, thank you so much for taking time out of your weekend to help inspire some people out there looking to be a signing agent. I'm really, really excited. So let's just kind of jump right into it, Amber. Um, for really quickly, for everybody out there, you're in Colorado. Where are you in Colorado? I'm in Castle Rock, so 30 miles south of Denver. Okay, great, suburb of Denver. I love it, I love it, I love it. So. Um, okay, cool. So can you maybe tell us your journey, why you became a signing agent? Like, you know, a lot of people out there are like looking at this video, like, you know, why should I be a signing? So let's tell us your journey. Um, so my husband's self-employed. Uh, he's a real estate appraiser. I've bounced back and forth uh, bartending. Whenever we needed extra cash, I would kind of get a bartending job and do that. But it's nights, weekends, holidays. We have three kids. But my kids were kind of getting older, so I just felt like I should be contributing a little bit more. I help him with his business, but I kind of wanted something of my own. So I love it. So you, you're, so what I'm understanding is, you know, you're a stay-at-home mom, and you know, whenever you kind of need extra money, you were bartending on the side, yeah. uh, and then there became a point, obviously, where you're like, I need more money than bartending is giving me that I need to contribute to the family. Yeah. Does that sound I right? Mean, hours of bartending. I, you could work a six seven hour shift and now i'm making that amount in two hours <laughs> it's the best business ever so you know i think it's really inspiring that you go from a stay-at-home mom and to you know wanting to create your own income and your your own business you know so talk about how you found becoming a signing agent um so we refied our house there was a mobile uh, mobile notary came to our signing i, I asked him a couple of questions and then i googled um side hustles without a degree and notary signing agent was one of them that popped up. I watched a couple of videos of you on YouTube and that I just told my husband, I'm, I'm going to do this by the I next morning. I had my notary commission. I was not a notary before. And then I took your course, finished it in a month or two. And that was it. Awesome. So what I, what I think is really inspiring out there is, you know, we I mean, you, the, the, to me, I'm a little 21 month old. So like being a mom is the toughest job in the world. And I, and so all mothers out there, like there's a whole new level of respect yeah. that I now have. And so, you know, the fact that you went from being a stay home mom without a college degree, cause it's the toughest job in the world. And so that you've being a signing agent, cause I always tell people like, you don't need any college degrees. You don't need any prior experience. No, so that's, what's crazy. Right. And so I mean, my sister, like I, of all the people that I know, like, I have so many friends. My sister sits in a cubicle from nine to five. She tells me, the, like, I make twice as much as she makes in three hours. Yesterday, I had six signings, but the coolest part about it is I had a nine and a 10. I banged those out. And then I had from 10 to three off. My husband and I went to lunch. I ran some errands. I did stuff around the house. And then I had four after. So I did six appointments. I made $555, but I had from 10 technically 1030 to three off. So if my kids have a, a rehearsal or something at school, some performance, I just block it off. I That's just awesome. don't take assignments that day. It's awesome. And thank you for letting, I mean, I appreciate you being vulnerable and transparent, you know, because, you know, the fact that you actually Googled side hustles without college degree, um, mm -hmm. there's a lot of people watching this. You're like, you know, am I, can I do this? You know, I don't have a college degree. I don't have any experience, which kind of leads me to my next question before we get into how you built your business. And that is, do you feel like anybody could get into this industry? You know, because someone like yourself, who was a bartender, basically, to becoming a signing agent and you have no college degree. I mean, can you talk through someone else who may be watching this right now? And like, 
did your opinion of that you don't need any experience can you talk through that to encourage them? i i mean anybody could do it as long as they apply themselves honestly taking your course and just basically doing exactly what you say but my first my first child i had when i was 18 a month before i turned 19. so i had just finished high school i didn't go to college i was a single mom for a little bit by the time i was 25 i had three kids you know so I didn't have a college degree. I went to uh, bartending every once in a while, but if uh, yes, anybody could do it. I mean, really, it's Thank you. you just apply yourself. That's Thank it. You. Whatever effort. What's crazy about this business is it almost feels like people are watching me sometimes because whatever, whenever I sit and I put any amount of effort into this, I get it back right away. Like. Anytime I'm like, okay, I'm just gonna watch another course or something like that, freshen up my skills. I get a notification or some call from a title company that day or the next day. Like what effort in is like money out. Like, it's just crazy. I thank you for being so honest and transparent because um, yes, I believe in, and I can sit from a soapbox all day and say anyone can do this, but like hearing your story is super inspiring and thank you so much for just, inspiring somebody who might be in your same boat where you know i'm a stay-at-home mom i have no college degree i, I bartend you know part part time but i need money and the fact that you literally googled side hustle no college degree and now uh how much money are you making a month if you don't mind me asking uh i cannot work very hard and make four easy four thousand easy if i bust it i can make six i'm already i'm up to I think I'm up to 54 for the month right now. No, 55 for the month right now. Dude, 5,500, there's still basically a week of the uh, a month uh, uh, left. And so you're going to easily pay you $6,000 this month. Yeah, that's my goal. Yeah, so, I'm so proud of you, honestly, Amber. It's I, now knowing your story and hearing it, it's even more inspiring for me. Like, it's just amazing what you're doing for you and your family. So congratulations on what you're building. I know you're, this is just the beginning of your, your, your journey. And, you're gonna to get to a 10, 10K club. There is no doubt yeah. in my mind. Okay, cool. So thank you so much for sharing that story. So let's go into a few um, tips and tricks of how you built your business. Uh, you know, so my first question is, is there, any, was there one big tip that you can give a, a signing agent who's looking to create the business that you've created in such a short time? I, uh, how much time do you have, man? So, <laughs> as long as you need. Right? Okay, so number one, quick super easy the lss just just do what you say just do what mark says um the second one i have two quick stories but the Please. second one would be pushing yourself out of your comfort zone um i struggle with that a little bit like at the beginning i just worried so much like what if these people ask me a question i don't know the answer to that kind of thing like it's it's so much easier not having to worry it like you just can't worry about all the little things push yourself out of the comfort zone i went to a ribbon cutting at a title company colt i didn't know anybody there i saw it on linkedin and i went i walked in the title company is like oh do you know people here i knew nobody no i don't know anybody here oh my gosh they freaked out they introduced me to their closers the the girl that i talked to that day i sat in my car and almost didn't go in because the building was shiny and it was very intimidating so I convinced myself to go in. The girl that I talked to at that ribbon cutting, we're all friends now. Like we go to happy hour, our husbands know each other. Like that led to, and that was just cold. But that any time I've ever pushed myself out of the comfort zone in this business, it has always come back to me tenfold. So that would be like my second little tidbit. Can I talk through that? Because Amber, that was an amazing piece of advice and information and because a lot of people are just like you amber where they feel like oh man I i'm nervous I are they gonna like me and the fact yeah. that you say you know which i always tell you students success is always one step outside your comfort zone i didn't invent that saying up but i'm a believer in it and the fact that you're saying like i sat in my car and almost not went in there are some signing agents who are actually okay. signing right now who've experienced that not just the new ones looking in and the fact that like everyone are, they're just humans like you go out and look what happened you know like sometimes we're our own worst enemy um and you're kind of and i've bombed some i've gone into some and i've bombed some and i've walked out 
feeling stupid. I call my husband. I'm like, oh my gosh, I totally choked. And that's fine. Like you walk away, maybe you go back in, maybe you don't. But then if you go into a few, those connections, and it's weird how everybody is so connected once you make a connection and then, oh, I know so-and-so. It's like, and then you you do say something in one of your courses, um, being omnipresent. And I think that's a big deal. Like all the little connections that I made that I wrote down, hey, I have this, this is a possible like lead, that kind of thing, real estate agents, those have all have come full circle. Like it's just weird how many people know each other in this business. And then my aunt works at a bank and that kind of stuff. It just all comes around. Like it there's just like a, snowballs, really. There's so many great things you're saying in there. You know, I tell you guys, you know, utilize your, your, your personal network. Um, I love that you picked up on the on the present title. And, you know, mm -hmm. Amber, here's what I'm going to say right now on this video is, you know, successful people are implementers. And the fact that you implement, it makes me proud. There's no need to recreate the wheel. And so the fact that you pick up on the on the present term and the concept of it, uh, like as your mentor, this makes me smile ear to ear because so many students don't kind of apply everything they're learning. So honestly, thank you for doing that. I know that's why you're going to just keep going to the moon on this. But I think there's another couple of little nuggets that I love that you told that I hope a new signing agent or a veteran signing agent picked up on. And is that this ribbon cutting that you went at a new title office, you found on LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. It wasn't oh, yes. like you were part of some big email chain or you no. knew someone from somebody. It's just simply going on a professional networking site like LinkedIn, finding out where a local event is, and then going in and, and preparing yourself for that. And hopefully you're using part of the script that I gave you in the course. But once you understand that finding these events aren't terribly hard. Oh, and, isn't it? You know, and the fact that you're talking through that, like, because I always tell all you students, nerves are normal. Nerves means you care. Oh, if, you were, if you weren't nervous, I would be like, what's wrong with you? <laughs> so yeah. the fact that they you are so pumped that I was there and that I didn't know anybody. Like when I walked in, I was like looking for, you know, some eyes or something. Somebody met my eyes. Hey, how are you? Who do you know here? I don't know anybody. I'm a mobile notary. I just came in to introduce myself. Say hi. What? They all just freaked <laughs> out. Like, uh, I mean, it just, it, like it never happens. This this interview is inspiring on many levels. The fact that you mean you represent what most notary signing agents are, and that's just nervous about going in and saying something that you're not a. And thank you for being transparent that you're just like everybody. You know, not everybody has that gift of just let's just walk in and talk to everybody. And so the fact that oh, you're sitting in the car and that you're nervous, um, I, and then letting people know that success is one side out your side, step outside your comfort zone. Thank you. I mean, the nugget from the LinkedIn is amazing. The, the the walking, the transparency of I'm nervous. And the fact that when you go in there, it's like, oh, I had nothing to be nervous at, about at all. And that's what it every costs. Time, every time I do anything, it's I I leave and like, I'm so glad I forced myself to do that. <laughs> you know, like I do have one other one in that. Yes, OK, please. another short, short, tiny story. Uh, yeah. So I have one other small tip. Um, okay, cool. the, other one, the other day I have, a, it's a small story, but the other day I was doing a signing for a signing service and I missed the cutoff, the shipping cutoff for the first time. I've never missed a shipping cutoff. It was a loan application. If it was a purchase, I would have like, you know, <laughs> dropped everything to get it there. But I did what I could. I went to two different FedExes. I missed it regardless. I called her. I emailed her, the owner of the signing service. I let her know I, I missed the cutoff, but I'd be willing to scan the documents they'd go out the next morning, but I could scan them if that would help. She was so grateful, like that I was willing to scan them. She said, yes, please scan them. I'm sure the loan officer would love that. And then she sent me a separate email saying that she so appreciates the effort and she remembers that kind of stuff because most notaries, she said, I would be surprised how many notaries don't care. So that would be my other thing. I mean, I care about it. It's my business. I consider it my business. It's my own little thing that I started on my own, but I care about it. Like I, I, I try hard at it and it's just amazing how many don't care. So that's it. That's my other. Yeah, thing. no, I agree. And and I think that's part of the loan signing system, you know, mantra is that gratitude is everything. And so, you know, I think that hearing it from a real signing agent that, you know, that there's so many other, you've, you've been told by a signing service owner from the horse's mouth, 
that most signing agents don't care. So the fact that you do care separates you. And, and you know, I always try to teach you students as best as I can is, you know, these signing service owners and these title companies are literally putting food on your plate. And like, why wouldn't you be like super authentic and it's great? So right? so, I mean, it's so easy. Right? It's so easy. It's an email. Literally, and now right? it's like, now she emails me for assignments or calls me personally for assignments. They don't come through on the whole big board thing anymore. And it's right. so easy. I actually messed up, but it benefited me in the end. Because yeah. it's how you take care. I always tell new students, it's not the error that matters. It's how you handle the error that matters. So you don't need to overthink the error itself. It's to show a uh, sincere apology and let me do what I got to fix it. So I'm proud of you for once again being a phenomenal implementer. Um, so let's get back to the business you're making because a lot of signing agents, you know, kind of are interested in that. So uh, you're doing four to $6,000 a month like clockwork. Is that right? Yes. Um, Consistently four. It just depends on how. I, want to work. I yeah. love it. So which kind of leads me into my next point. Oh, uh, you know, actually before I get to that point, so how much of your business is signing service? How much is it direct like through that title company? So like 50, I have 50, two title 50. companies. Okay. Um they I I'm not gonna say that I'm their go to. Um okay. I'm working on it though. Uh but but Amber, yeah, let's, stop right, my, let's, let's stop yeah. right there and have a conversation because okay a lot of new signing so I got veteran signing agents who are looking right now and I try to tell you know veteran signing agents. I can teach you how to get in title offices. But the first statement to me when I say that is, well, title companies already have who they use, or they're never gonna use me. They're never gonna use another notary from off the street. And the fact that you just said, which cements my point, I want you to I want to talk through that if you're okay, mm -hmm. is you know, you're not their number one notary, and that's okay. But be, just because you're not their number one notary doesn't mean you're not getting business. Kind of talk through the fact that you're not their number one but yet you still get business from them. So the title company girl that I know that we were, our families are friends now, which just happened, you know, because I went to that ribbon cutting. Um, I'm not their go-to. She, they, they prefer out of her mouth, they prefer to use some guy. I don't know who it is, but it's just a matter of time before I get rid of him. And then I'll it, so. <laughs> but the fact is that, that the go-to notary. Yes. It has a 730 and there's then they have two 730s and obviously oh, yeah. they lose you right yeah. and so then she introduced you know me to another uh, another closer in her office so that lady she calls and texts me now so now i'm getting appointments from the both of them it just kind of snowballs you know and the both of them have their go-to notaries mm -hmm. so what would you say as a, a, a now a signing agent a year into the business what would you say to someone who says uh, they won't, they won't use me off the street because they already have a go-to notary. I just, I just check back in. I mean, there's a title company, the other title company that I'm kind of in with. Um, again, I'm not their go-to. Um, but I just, every once in a while, yesterday he called me when I was in the midst of my six appointments and said, we're going to start using you more. They're totally slammed. He wants to, he wants me to email so the business that, card. So let, me, let me grab that point real quick. They're slammed. <laughs> so the point is, is their go-to notary is slammed? Yeah. If their go-to notary is slammed, who also, they need more than one notary. And I guess that's what I'm trying to get out of you is that, you know, you're not the go-to notary because the go-to notary isn't a bad notary. They didn't fall off of whatever. The fact is, I love how this is a live interview. We saw your hubby in the background. Hi, hubby. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, the fact of the matter is that because they're slammed, they need backup notaries. I guess that's what I'm trying to ask her. Ask yeah, you. yeah, I'm the backup for sure. And right. I, and that's okay. I'll, st I'll be their backup for a while and I'll take the ones that are a little further and all that kind of stuff until, until I'm their go-to and that's fine. But what's cool is at the very beginning in November, I got a call. We were in a cabin for Thanksgiving. I got a call from a signing service that find, found me on signingorder.com. And he said he has a ton of volume. So he interviewed me for a second over the phone, said, I'm going to send you a ton of volume. It was great experience at the time. They were kind of low ball um, and a little bit high maintenance, if I'm not going to be honest. But, uh, you know, um, and, but I took him and I took him and it gave me confidence and experience. And that's fine. But now I could be very choosy on what signing service appointments I take. Mine now are. Let's talk through that. No. Let's talk through that because, you know, there's a lot of new signing agents. And so what I teach you guys is to take everything in the beginning so you can create that momentum because momentum creates momentum. 
now you're a year in the business. So what I love about this interview is, you know, I've, I've interviewed some signing agents for three months in the business. You know, you're now a year into the business. And so, you know, what you're saying is, you know, the way you've built it is, like you said, the way I teach. And that's like, kind of take everything, even if they're quote unquote low ball, it's still money in your pocket. You know, don't be picky in the beginning. But now that you've created your, your business, now you can have a business that more works around your specific lifestyle. Specifically, you can pick and choose what I don't want to do, what I do want to do. So I think that's another good piece of advice. And, and, and let me see if you agree with it, is that, you know, to a new signing agent, kind of take everything because you'll get to where you are, but you don't yeah. start off where you are. No. I mean, at, at the beginning, I would have paid to, to have an assignment at the beginning. Yes. You know, I just wanted to get my nerves out and mm -hmm. get experience. I didn't even care. I just knew, like, it's going to be an investment. I'm not going to hit gold or whatever right away. Um, so, yeah, I, I took the low balls, and it was great. I mean, it was great while it lasted. And let's be and honest, Amber. The, got... the low balls are good. It, low balls are only low balls because you you want to get direct business, right? Direct business right. is 150 bucks, so I'm saying five yeah, bucks. I want to scan backs and all those but, other people. You know, but my point of trying to make it's all relative, right? So yeah. when you say low ball, it's just lower than the 150. But even if it's $80, I mean, no matter how you cut it, $80, $75 for an appointment that takes an hour is still good money. It's not 150, but you got to work yourself to the 150, the 175. Yes. But low ball at 75, 80 or 90 dollars, I don't think is terrible, especially when you're building a business. So, you know, some of these people who are watching when, when they low ball is in relative to like you're not making 125, but no. 75 dollars for an appointment that takes an hour, I think is pretty stellar yes. considering you're brand new into a brand new business. And honestly, OK, I'm just going to shoot you straight. But the low balls, if you have a lot of them in one day, it's not so bad because right. you're yeah. you're banging them all out. It's not right. like if I have to take a shower, I take into consideration the fact that I have to blow dry my hair and do all that stuff. And then I have to shower, get out of my sweatpants, do all that. If it's just for one low ball, probably not worth it. But if I have five low balls, it's totally right. worth it. And then you're making what, what, you're selling your, what, what I think what you're selling yourself short on is that, you know, you had the mindset of. I'm going to do three or four. I'm not going to, because oh, yeah. you don't know if you're going to have two or three more low balls, what we right. call low balls, until yeah. you take number one. So yeah. you still took number one, knowing that your day could probably fill up. And that mindset, I think, is important. And I don't want to sell yourself short on that, because yeah. you didn't know you're having signing three, four, or five until you took signing one. You still I, took signing one. That now, is absolutely true. Yeah. Now that you're busier, the mindset's changed because you've now built a sustainable business. But in the beginning, I want to point out that you took the one $75 one, not knowing that you're going to get two, three or four or five. True. And so that, that ended up happening as you build your business. But like I said, what I think is great in this interview is you're to the point now you can make that decision because you built a business. Oh yes. But when you, when you were building, you were taking everything, not knowing if there was going to be another one. And I don't want that being swept under the rug. Because that's a testament to the loan signing system way, and that is take everything because to get where you are now, Amber, you had to yeah. do what you did in the beginning, and now yeah. you should be picky because yes. you're a full-fledged business owner. You've built a business. You're not I really feel building. weird. Like I feel fake saying that, but I guess it's true. <laughs> so. Totally true. I don't, I don't want you selling yourself short. It's like yeah. you've built a business. You deserve that what you're doing now you deserve like you know what it's not worth 75 dollars my time right now the crazy part they're signing agents right now like oh my gosh i take 75 dollars in a second but i think it's awesome that you've built a business to where you're like you know what 75 dollars isn't worth me putting off taking off my sweats and i don't <laughs> think you're wrong with that i think it's built such an awesome business that yeah. you're now like huh i have that luxury yeah. that's right and so don't sell yourself short because in the beginning you didn't have that mentality. No. And so I don't want a new signing agent thinking no. that you have the mentality in the beginning because in the beginning, it was like, I'm taking everything, I'm building a business, I'm learning my skill set, I'm getting confident. And if I've got to take one $75 appointment that, that takes me three hours, so be it because I'm building that skill set. So I don't want a new signing agent looking at this saying, oh, you know, Amber picks and chooses. You didn't do that in the beginning. Oh, no. And there was, okay, uh, to put it all relative, there was six hour shifts I worked for lunch bartending and I would be stoked to make 60 bucks. 
Yeah, yeah, that's right. That's right. And now you're a signing agent. Here's where you've, your life's come full circle is now you look at a signing for 80 bucks and you go, huh? And you just <laughs> <Yeah>. stand, <laughs> exactly. stand on your feet for six hours yeah. and making money. Now you turn down the money that you used to stand on your feet for six hours. Like you've come a long way. I'm so proud of you, Amber. Like mm -hmm. pat yourself on the back. You should stop to smell the roses. Just don't stay there for that long. Um, but like, that is so freaking awesome. So I uh, kind of wrapping this up a little bit. You've been amazingly transparent and insightful. Thank you for all the nuggets you're dropping. Um, you know, for somebody else who may be watching this, you know, on YouTube, kind of where you found found my videos, yeah. and they're thinking, man, okay, so I love Amber's story. I know I could do it too. Anyone can do it. She doesn't have a college degree. What are some of the things that you love about being a signing agent that someone watching it may not think about, right? So whatever that is for you, you know, I'm not asking you to dig in the psyche. It's just of something the else, flexibility. The flexibility is awesome. I mean. My husband works from home, so we both kind of have flexibility, but we could just go to lunch whenever, you know, in the middle of the day. If I have to drive, which I often have to taxi my children all around town, I could just schedule around that, you know. I just, it, the flexibility <coughs> and the money with the flexibility is bananas. That's great. I love it. I love it. So, um, a last, last kind of on the way out question. And thank you. I think the like, to me, uh, the flexibility is the best part about this business. Mm -hmm. I mean, I used to like not tell all my escrow officers when I was a full-time signing agent. Now I'm a full-time mentor. Uh, when I'm a full-time signing agent, I'm not going to work till noon because I got things to do in the morning. And, and once you get to a business that builds itself, mm -hmm. that's more than realistic. Yeah. Um, so signing agents out watching this right now, this is kind of our last exiting question, you know, cause I get, you know, you know me and, and I preach that, you know, I, teach signing agent marketing what makes a loan signing system different than everybody else is that marketing i want you guys to go out market 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 i get some signing agents who go oh mark signing agent marketing is a myth you can't market as tight title companies you can't market to lenders you know you can't market to real estate agents you know that why would it, signing agent marketing isn't real i'm only signing services is the only way to go and so what would you say to a signing agent new or veteran that you know if you apply, is, is signing agent marketing real? Is that a thing? Um, okay, so the first thing I ever did was sponsor a CTME class for realtors. I absolutely choked. They gave me like 30 seconds at the beginning to present my whole spiel. I got red and blotchy and choked and walked <laughs> out of there thinking I was a failure. They were all very nice, whatever, but I walked out feeling like a failure. That title company that I went to, and I went far away because if, if I messed up, it was further away <laughs> from my house. That title company that I messed up with, that I felt like I messed up with, was the like same title work. company. <laughs> the same title company that I went to that ribbon cutting. So when I went to that ribbon cutting, I recognized one of the ladies from the time that I choked before. Choked before. Yeah. It all comes full circle. It's crazy how many of them know each other. The two title companies that I know, I could throw names out. They both know each other. And then it seems like I know everybody. It is right. absolutely worth it to go out. Even if, even if you choke, it is so worth it to go sponsor a thing, show up to their barbecue, their, their CTME class, whatever, their ribbon cutting, so worth it. It is absolutely a thing. So you're saying signing agent marketing is real. And with the proper oh. techniques, like I teach in the course, um, yeah. that, that, you know, that signing agents should get out and market themselves. And not only like you get business with signing service, which is great, but you don't only rely on that. You know, I think you should have a diverse portfolio, which I teach you, you know, mm -hmm. get business with signing services, get business and title, get business from real estate agents. And so I just wanted to hear from a real signing agent who's making, you know, 50 to 60, $70,000 a year that, mm -hmm. you know, signing agent marketing is real. It, it, it's absolutely, a, you can go out and get title business. Yeah. Um, you can actually go out and get real estate agent business. I mean, not just signing services. And so I just like hearing it from a real signing agents out there pounding the pavement like you who thinks they choke only to realize that choking moment got in business the second time yeah. around. Yep. You know, like I teach you guys, there's no such thing as choking. There's always learning and you're going to, it's going to come back to you. So, um, mm -hmm. is there any final words you want to wrap up this, this, this amazing interview with? No, <laughs> I think I said a lot. <laughs> I love it. You're amazing. Okay, I have one last question. I looked at my notes below. One last question. Because yes. you're so transparent, and that's why I'm going to ask this. Is okay. it, when you first started being a signing, like first doing a signing, or let me take that back. 
That's looking back at your journey, let me, let me word it like this. Yeah. Looking back at your journey, was there something you were super nervous about now a year into your journey? You're like, wow, I should never have been nervous. Because what I'm hoping is, is that something you yeah. say someone's nervous about right now watching this and you're like, look, I was that way too. So, yeah. so is there something I that haven't. you were super nervous about in the beginning that now a year in you're like, I was, I don't know why I was nervous. My my fear was if they ask me a question, if I'm at a signing and they ask me a question, I can't answer. And my first signing was with an elderly lady and I was so nervous that she started doubting whether or not it was a real loan. Like that's how nervous I was, but we got through it and that was fine. She was a perfect first, you know, signing for me. But the fact like, that they're gonna ask you a question that you don't know the answer to, you don't need to have all the answers. You just need to, to be able to present the docs with the general purpose of the document. If they have like questions on the numbers, you call, right. you call whoever they need to call. You say, I'm a neutral third party, let's call. That's it. I mean, you don't have to be able to explain anything. You just need to know the general purpose of the docs, which is in your course, and that's it. It was, it was, that was my biggest fear. Oh man, Emily, it's such a good ending statement. You do, and I love that you don't need a lot of signing agents kind of oh, an, an, uh, they overanalyze. And yeah. the fact that you, know, you were scared about not knowing the answers, but realize I don't really need to know the answers. That's what the signing service is for. That's what the lenders for. That's what the real estate agents for. So that yep. is so awesome. Great last nugget, uh, <laughs> Amber. Uh, let me say thank you for being transparent. Thank you. Thank you for letting uh, stay-at-home moms know that they can do this too. Let people thank you for letting people without college degrees know that they can go out and create a sixty, seventy thousand dollar a year business. Thank you for letting people know that you were super nervous in the beginning. It was nothing just over, but overthinking. And thank you for being absolutely amazing, Amber. I am so proud of you. I, the, the agent you've become is amazing. So congratulations to building an amazing business. Thank you again, and I appreciate you. So I'll much. see you back when I make ten k. That's what I'm saying. I'll, I conference next year walking across that stage. All right. I'll see you conference next year. Bye, Amber. Bye.